how are you guys doing hello hello welcome to my channel my name is Amina if you are new here if you are not then welcome back and if you are then join this channel I would absolutely love if you could subscribe to my channel to see more from me I typically produce videos about academia about being more productive using your time more efficiently and also some stuff about motherhood now that I'm a mum of two so I feel like I haven't actually sat down and done a sort of Q&A chatty get to know me video and I've got loads of you guys that have joined me recently and so I thought it'd be nice to kind of do an updated Q&A and I asked on Instagram follow me on Instagram I'll leave my Instagram over here I asked for some questions and I got loads of questions a bit of a mix a bit of a random mix there's the motherhood stuff there's PhD stuff academia stuff and um, so I just thought I'd just so all in. I'll leave timestamps down below for the questions and like what topics they were. So if you want to jump to a different question, feel free to go and do that. But I do want to incorporate a lot more sort of videos about my person, like who I am and sort of a bit more vlogs and a few more motherhood content and yeah, stuff like that. Stuff that's not so academic heavy. So yeah, if you want to see more about that, then don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so like I said, it's gonna be, I'm not gonna do this in any order. There's stuff about motherhood and whatever. So just look down below click, click on the questions that you're interested in and feel free to watch the specific answers okay so the first question is do you provide help or guidance on grant applications so I'm assuming you mean PhD grant applications and the question to that is yes I can definitely help I have a business called the page doctor dot com page doctor it's my baby it's my absolute love and it's something that I'm actually doing full-time now so I haven't mentioned this really anywhere yet but I have left work officially so I'm not going back to work after my maternity leave and maybe I'll do a video talking about why I decided to do that my motivations etc but I'm not going back to work and the page doctor is now my job um, I'm a fully fledged entrepreneur, whatever you want to call it, businesswoman, I know that's who I am now and the page doctor is my business and also obviously I have my YouTube and my Instagram and my social media etc. So that is what I'm doing as for career, as for work but I had a baby five months ago so I'm still on maternity leave so that's where that, <laughs> that's where that is. So yes, we can definitely help. There's a chat box on my website on thepagedoctor.com, leave a question there with your name and your details and we can definitely get back to you regarding that. The next question is about my work life. So what was your work-life balance like during my PhD program? I think I had a really good work life and I think a lot of a lot of that was to do with the fact that I didn't take any work home and for the most part so I was there on weekends don't worry I was there very late at night very early mornings but for the most part I, I told myself that unless it's an exception unless there is something coming up like talk or I have to present or there's an experiment that it has you know is quite timely and we're publishing soon unless something like that was happening I made it a norm not to take any work home and I took that discipline I took that practice throughout my job as well so after I finished my PhD and I went into work I was always the same so I always told myself unless you absolutely have to and it's unavoidable which sometimes it is then never take work home and if you make that a norm then as much as you can it means that you are maintaining some sort of balance in your life and it means that when you are taking work home, you're not resentful about it, you're doing it because you actually have to and you actually enjoy doing it and you know it's part of your job, it's fine, but it's not the norm, right? So that's how I maintained a balance. And if it meant that I did the experiment tomorrow, if it meant that I wasn't as well read as I was supposed to be for the next day, it's fine. Like as long as I was able to make the discussions and was able to present what I had to present. If it meant that I had that balance and it meant that I had the sanity of not being up late doing work, then that was like my, I guess, the discipline that I like to uphold. My biggest tip if you are a student or if you are a PhD researcher and you're thinking about like struggling and you're struggling with your balance is to ask yourself, what are you doing after five or 6 p.m.? Do you have to do it? Is it something that you can fit in during the day or can you just like wait till tomorrow? Normally in research, nothing is that timely. You don't have to do it today. You can do it tomorrow and that is okay. The next question, <laughs> completely different topic, is breast pump recommendation if you use one. Yes, I do. It's the Medela double pump. I will leave it freestyle, or free, Medela freestyle double pump. I'll leave the link for it down below. I wouldn't recommend getting, getting the double. I got the double because I just thought you needed two, but you actually don't because you only use one at one time. So I could have saved 
like half I could have got for like half the price it's quite expensive as well so I only ever, ever use one at one time so if you are going to get it get the single one not the double but it's so good I can get a full pump like I don't know how many mil 200 mil in like five or six minutes so it's super super quick doesn't spill and I've also seen the EV one recommended the wireless one but I've heard a lot of people saying that it spills it breaks it is not great it's quite expensive so that's why I went with the Medela because it's, it's a well-known brand when it comes to pumping for me I, I pump just when I need someone else to look after Maria so for the most part um, I don't so I think she's probably been looked after twice in five months so it's for the most part she's with me so I don't pump but it's only for the days where I need to do something urgently and I can't take her with me now someone said when is the birth vlog coming out still waiting there is no birth vlog I mean there is but it's not going on the internet <laughs> I, I did the birth a story I think and the labor story I posted that a couple weeks ago I'll leave a link for that down below as well but there's no vlog that's going on the internet <laughs> there is video footage but it's not going on the internet, so there's that. So, so do you have a finance related video on your channel? Yes, I actually did a couple finance related videos a few years ago now, so like before I had kids, pre-COVID. I did two videos, one was about how to balance your finances with the business, and the other one was about how I paid off my 30,000 um, pounds of student loan and how I became debt free and I mean, I think one of the reasons why I kind of stopped doing finance related videos is because there are different opinions, there are different opinions and viewpoints on everything and especially when it comes to finance related, I think some people, I think some people like to dictate how others should live their life and the rules that others should uphold and we don't all believe in the same thing, we don't all see the same thing. I'm trying to be quite vague because I don't really want to, I don't really want to discuss it to be honest and I feel like when I've spoken about these things to do with finance and student loan and paying off debts and etc um, there's always some comments and there's always some people that seem to think that their way is the highway and I I would never impose my views on anyone if I don't like your view or I, I don't agree with your view I will just walk away from that and I just exit the video but some people like to impose things on other people and so I think just for my own sanity and just because like ultimately if you believe in one thing, go and do that, I'll go and do what I believe in. I think I spoke about mortgages as well at one point, and it was like a whole like lecture under my video, and I was just like, ugh. So, there's that. But, maybe in the future, I'll definitely <laughs> touch upon it again, and um, yeah, just moderate the comments and just delete things as it comes through. The next uh, comment says, uh, question says, are you planning on homeschooling? In an ideal world, like when I say ideal, it means that I'm not doing anything else. Like I have no business, I'm I'm just a mum and, and that's my, that's what I do. Yes, I actually would. I think that, I think I'm a really good, like this is in the most humble, modest way as possible. I think I'm a really good teacher. I know that I can present topics and present information quite well and I have a lot of patience and I know that I can, I, I, I am a teacher. I know that I do, I do my job well. So I know that I could definitely teach my kids and I could definitely homeschool them but it wouldn't align it, it wouldn't give me the freedom to be who I want to be because all day I'm going to be with them and then all evening I'm with them as well so it wouldn't give me any time away from them or any time by myself and I think for me it's important that I am able to grow as who I am and I know that I've got a lot of potential to do a lot of other things I want to write a book I want to release a product I want to there's just so many things that like I have a newsletter that I release every week I have a podcast that is almost on its dying legs but we want to re <laughs> resuscitate I you know have my YouTube channel and so many things and I think if I was a homeschool mum then there's, there would be absolutely no time to do that because I want to be the best homeschooling mum and so I just wouldn't have time to do anything else and I think like, it's important for me that I am my own person aside from my children like I'm I know a lot of people that when they have kids they say they've lost themselves and that, that you know they don't know themselves anymore and that's something that I never want to ever feel and I think because I've got all this stuff going on I haven't felt that yet and I don't I never want to feel that and I think being a homeschooled mum would make me feel like that um, as much as I absolutely love it. So in an ideal world, I, I, you know, yes, and I rate those that do it. I think it's amazing. But for me personally, it's not something that I can see as allowing me to have the, the life that I want to have. Um, this question I've had so much, especially on my labor and delivery video, the first one with Sophia. Um, flax seeds at the end of pregnancy, how should it be taken? Now, with anything in pregnancy or anything to do with your health, do your research, speak to your GP, your doctor, whatever, 
and know your body like you know don't just listen to what someone on the internet has said regardless of who i am or who the person is right so when it comes to flax seeds flax seeds are great i've done like i've looked at research papers about it they're great because they have like a gelatinous layer and so when you have enough of it at the end of your pregnancy it can help like with the actual labor itself and with the delivery having like a smooth delivery right it's like a lubricant but you're supposed to have it towards the end of your pregnancy because it can also cause the onset of labor so you're not meant to have it too early because it can be dangerous for some but also you're not meant to have it too uh, like too late so i i think i started having it at like 35 weeks and about two or three like tablespoons like heaped tablespoons of ground flaxseed inside water inside milk like inside a cup of milk if you want hot milk and drink it or as a shot i just like shot it with water whatever as long as you consumed it you can have it in cereal or porridge whatever it is or even i think you probably can have it as a tablet i don't know but i had it as powder personally and it really really helped me like really helped me now like i said it works for me it was worked wonders for me but i have absolutely no like alhamdulillah i had no complications i had I was very low risk, I had nothing like wrong with me during my pregnancy. So I knew that it was okay for me and I spoke to my midwife and you know that was fine. But if you're in that position, do your research, this is not health advice. <laughs> I've had so many questions of people saying like, what should I do? I'm like, don't listen to me, I've just get told you what I've done. You guys do your research and do what you think is best for you. The next question is how do you build your business and how do you use Instagram for that purpose? This is such a good question. Instagram and social media is an amazing tool these days that we have that you can either use to your detriment and you can waste time and you know kind of be unproductive and just like yeah just waste time on it or you can use it for social for your social life to keep up with your family and friends or you can even use it to make money like people have made thousands millions of pounds off of social media the same social media that others are sitting on and just scrolling on so you can use it by building you can, it depends on what you want to build right do you want to build a community of people and then after that release a product so let's say you're talking about I don't know, being productive to stay on brand. So you make this productive brand and you're talking about productivity and efficiency and time management and, and all this kind of stuff. And you build a community that's really big and you haven't sold anything to them yet. You can do that, you can you know release memes, release reels, release all this information. And then after a couple of months and or years even of, of building this brand, you can then say, right guys, here's a planner. And you can release a, a productivity planner and that's how you can build the business. Or you can just go straight in with a product if that's what you want. And but the product has to be something that you can sell straight away. So you don't necessarily need for there to be a community of people. You just it has to be a good idea that you know you can sell. And then you go that way, and that works as well. So there's loads of different ways of building a brand on social media. Uh, you don't have to show your face. You can be anonymous. Dep it really depends on what your business is and what you're trying to sell. The next question is, which of the London universities do you like the most? So I went to UCL, I went to Imperial, and I went to King's College London. I also went to Roehampton as well, and then Sheffield, that's not in London. But um, I, I think I would probably say I really enjoyed UCL and KCL, so King's and UCL probably the most. And then if I had to choose, I'd probably say UCL, but that's because I did my PhD there, and by that point, I kind of knew what I wanted from a uni. I've been to two unis already and I knew like what I wanted from a university but I also really loved Kings and I think you know honestly I loved Imperial as well but I think with Imperial like I was my intentions for going there was just to get a really good degree from a really good university so I didn't really care for the social life I didn't really care for like all that kind of stuff well actually if I look back at it it probably would have been you know just as good if I had put in like those efforts in that direction so I don't want to bash any any uni because I think they're all really good but it depends on what you want to get out of it um, but all of them in London are yeah they're really good how do you plan your day or activities for your son this is a really good question actually and um, I might do a whole video on this because I think it's something that I've never actually seen and I don't know how I thought about it. But essentially I kind of try to break it up in parts. So you know, you've got the morning and you have breakfast, you know, get changed, blah, blah, blah. And then you've got morning activity. So then before nap time, so he naps around 11.30, 12 o'clock. So in between the morning and nap time, so that's like between, you know, nine, eight, nine, like eight, nine to 12 o'clock. There's like three hours there. So we'll always do something in his room so that will be like we've got color we've got coloring book we do reading so i i like to make every activity like exciting so i'll be like it's reading book time <laughs> i'll make it into like this thing um, and so now when i say reading book time 
kind of like he knows what it is he'll get the blanket he'll get the books and we'll sit down we'll have like a bit of snacks on the side have some water like raisins dates some fruits whatever and it's a thing like i've made it exciting it's not like come on let's go and read books now it's not like that it's like it's reading book time and that's always that always happens at that time of the day coloring in playing just playing in his room that happens like for that time of day and then there's nap time and then that's that's that time of the day like it's always between 12 to 1 2 then straight after then there's lunch time um, and then he has lunch and then after lunch there's another afternoon like block of time until sleep time which is six o'clock so but from 2 to 6 p.m we'll do a bit more like just whatever so usually in the afternoon it's not really like with him specifically it's more just if i'm cooking or cleaning or if i'm doing something he's just around he might go out for a walk usually to the park well, that, that kind of thing happens in the afternoon or like call a family call a friend and that kind of thing happens in the afternoon and dinner like a bath shower so i kind of like to keep the morning for like directed learning playtime, and then the afternoon is more just like follow me in the house so that's yeah how i kind of break it down because i have maria now she's five months i can't really go out as much so a lot of the time that i spend with him is when she's asleep i make sure that i've given him like my full attention during that time and then the same person asked um tips on limiting screen time um so again i think what like i said if you have a routine where you always do the same thing then you won't be so tempted to break that routine so like i said in the morning breakfast get changed and then it's like just play so we're gonna read a book, we're gonna play with your toys, we're gonna do some coloring in, have as many things as possible where you can kind of distract and kind of play. And if it's not a habit, like if your child doesn't know watching TV is a thing, they're never gonna ask you for it, if that makes sense. Like he doesn't, he never touches my phone, he never touches anything around like any of my tech because it's just not a thing. Whereas if I start to show it to him on my phone and I start to use my laptop and my tech to show him things, like he will start to say, ma, 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 like give me the phone, but he just doesn't know that, so it's not a thing. And then in the afternoon, again, in the afternoon, just kind of leaving the house, trying to get out, like you can't watch TV when you're outside, right? So getting out, going to the park, doing actually doing, getting involved in things means that he's less likely to get bored and you're less likely to get bored and then you know, that won't happen. And um, when Sufyan, he gets, uh, screen time usually only when he eats so when he sat down in his high chair I'll put on something but that's only like I usually do something like like alpha blocks it's like alphabet learning show or number blocks which is a number learning show or like an Arabic speaking show and that's only during those times and it's like 10-15 minutes 20 minutes max and that's it otherwise like when you're out of the high chair there's nothing and that's I think it's, just, it's more of a habit thing than anything else at the moment anyway at what age would you like Sufyan to start nursery? Um, well, up to this point, he's two years old next month. We were like, oh, it's fine, now I can I can work and it's fine, I can just do things when he's napping in the evening. But we've realized very quickly that it's very difficult at the moment to get anything done for me personally. So last week I went to a couple of nurseries, checked them out, find what found one that I absolutely love, five minutes down the road, put his name down and I said, I want him to start ASAP. There's no space right now, so I'm just waiting for them to yeah find space for him, and he will start whenever. So probably he'll probably be two years old when he starts, but it won't be full time. I'll probably put him there for like two half days to start off with, see how it goes, and then increase it. But if any, it's only because I've got work to do. Otherwise. I would just keep him at home and just yeah keep entertaining him by myself. Do you have multiple streams of income and do you invest? I'm a new follower, but I love your content. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, I do. So I had my job, but I don't have that anymore. But I'm still getting maternity pay from that. So there's that. And then YouTube, the AdSense on YouTube, the Page Doctor is my business like i said i have courses on skillshare which actually are pretty decent when it comes to income i do mentorship oh i have a i'm part of an agency called 16th so i do ads on instagram ads on youtube ads on my social media that's also paid other random things like if i'm invited to a talk or if i'm invited to present something usually there might be like a bit of a speaker's fee for that as well so that's the, that's a bit random but um yeah, and then um, do I invest? Yes, I do. I have a personal ISA, a savings ISA on Vanguard. Sufyan has a kid's ISA. Maria has a kid's ISA as well. So hopefully by the time they are 18, they'll get a nice lump sum. Yeah, I have other like other investments as well. But Oh, and I have my property, which is an investment as well. Okay, almost this is becoming a bit, a bit of a long video, but I'm almost at the end now. I'm just picking up questions that are a bit different. How did you know what you needed to research before, during or after pregnancy? Um, I didn't know. I think 
like I, I'm the first child from my siblings to have a child first child first yeah first child <laughs> out of my siblings to have a child and then I'm also one of the first for my friends to have a child as well we kind of had children at the same time so none of us really knew what we were doing to be honest and we kind of just asked each other questions as we went along like oh what do we need for this oh what do we need for that google it ask midwives ask friends look on look on the internet and kind of just muddle your way through there's some things that I got that I didn't need there's some things that I got that I that I didn't get that I could have got something that I could have got cheaper so you just kind of have to ask and hope for the best but for the most part we have maternal instincts so we kind of know what we need and what we wouldn't need I would say my biggest tip is be like buy after the need occurs so try not to buy before so that like try to be reactive than proactive and I know that sounds advice that you shouldn't get but actually it works because like even buying a pushchair and things like that we only bought when Sufyan was like four months we bought pushchair because we realized what kind of pushchair we want rather than buying a pushchair beforehand and then realizing actually we don't need that big of a pushchair we don't need something that of that size or you know whatever that style so we've tried to be as reactive as possible when it comes to baby stuff so just thinking right we need we need this thing let's go and get it rather than okay we need x y and z before the baby's even born so th that's sort of my tip i'm gonna end with this question what are the most essential lessons you have learned from doing research on pregnancy I again this could be a whole video so i'm going to try and summarize my one thing but that is that the most essential lesson that i've learned is that you need to you need to know your stuff you need to know your body you need to know what the options are and you need to never be so stuck or so stubborn on one thing like you want a natural labor great well done do your best but it's okay if it's not like it's there are other ways of giving birth to your, your baby and having a healthy baby and being healthy yourself and and that's okay and i think that's something that like is my biggest lesson is never to be so stuck on one thing because when that thing doesn't happen that's when disappointment occurs and that's when like upset occurs and that's when a lot of other things can happen so I'd, I'd much rather always have in my mind what my preference is but know that that may not always happen and that's okay the same person just asked um, would you consider starting a whole new channel for your mumhood videos probably not honestly I don't have I, I really don't have the capacity <laughs> I wish but I really don't have the capacity at the moment to separate like have another whole another channel for for that stuff so I'd much rather just implement it within this channel in ways that I think work best and I know that not everyone's interested in that side of things and that's okay you know we are all evolving in life and I think my channel is an, is an evolution of me as a person so you know hopefully if you started my PhD vlogs and then you saw me get married and have kids like that is something that you are like it's an, it's an evolution of me like I said and it's I can't do PhD vlogs right now I'm not a PhD student so yeah I hope that that answers your question and maybe in the future when Sufyan goes to nursery and the kids are off you know in nursery I might have more time to focus on motherhood stuff but I do a lot more on Instagram so do watch there if you are interested but anyway I hope you enjoy this video I hope that you learned something about me and uh, I don't know I guess took away some advice or some tips if you want have any other questions leave them down below I am more than happy to answer them for you um, and I'll see you guys in my next video bye